All right. Hi. Uh, yeah, good morning, everyone. Morning. Hey, good morning. Nice that you show up. Um, yeah, my name is Chris, um, and I'd like to talk about BMCs a little bit. And um, who knows what a BMC is here? I know that you know, right? And probably you know. You guys? No idea. Okay. You guys? No idea. No idea. Okay. All right. Uh, that's great. Uh, so uh, first of all, that background image is AI generated, right? So that took me like three hours to do that. Uh, totally uh, well spent time. Um, so BMC stands for Basement Management Controller. And the idea is that every server board um, has one of those. Um, and, and why, you probably ask. Um, and um, the idea is that you want to manage your server remotely, right? So you don't want to always go into the data center and turn it on and off and see, you know, what's wrong with it. Um, and if you uh, know, pl need to plug in a USB stick, you don't want to um, you don't want to get by um, and, and plug in a USB stick. So the idea is to put in a dedicated microcontroller that actually does that for you, right? And that microcontroller is the, the baseboard, ma baseboard management controller. And um, it's either directly on the board um, or you can plug it in via some plug-in cards. Um, there are various standards for that, um, either uh, proprietary standards or the OCP now publishes the DCACM cards, for example. So it's, these are cards where BMC and a little bit peripheral is on it, and you can plug into a server board um, to have it remotely managed. Um, it has yeah, various, um, 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 it, it takes care of various tasks like remote control, host management, it does all the monitoring, like get those sensor readings and these kind of things. Um, and you can manage, or the inter interesting thing is that you can manage the system even if it's powered off, right? And with powered off, obviously I mean there needs to be power on the board, but the host itself um, does not need to be powered. And um, so I took uh, one, one super micro board here, and uh, actually the BMC is here in, the, in that corner here, right? So as you can see, it's an A speed, I don't know, 250, 2500 maybe, 2400. Um, um, that's like a very, very common chip to, to use here. And um, so yet you get an idea on what it can actually access. Um, I, I, took, um, I took it from the OpenBMC documentation, but it can basically everyth uh, access everything on your host, right? So it sits on the APC or eSpy bus. Um, it has access to PCIe, I2C. Um, it, it sits on a SPI bus, so it can access your flash from the host. Um, it has access to the packy devices and all these kind of things. So it's, it's uh, really the most privileged system in your, in your server, actually, in the end. And um, the good thing is that the status quo nowadays, so besides the proprietary solutions from AMI and Inside and Phoenix, is um, from an open source standpoint, um, we have a pr pretty, pretty solid solution here, um, which is OpenBMC. Right, OpenBMC has been started 2015 um, by Facebook in some kind of hackathon, and uh, 2018 um, it um, it became part of the Linux Foundation. However, um, there are multiple forks of OpenBMC. Right, so um, Facebook decided to do their own fork um, in 2018. Um, because they want to have like a reduced feature set or like a very specific set to their, uh, uh, to their infrastructure. Uh, Twitter had their own fork, Tyan had their own fork, not sure if they still maintain it. So there are like a variety of forks down there um, of OpenBMC. However, the Linux Foundation um, fork or the, the upstream project is still very active and very maintained. And um, you probably remember that picture from uh, Hancock's talk yesterday. Um, so what you basically have is um, you have your SOC, right, and that uh, the BMC firmware is obviously located on the SBI flash, right, that, that is attached to the SOC. And what you do is um, you boot U-boot as an um, initial firmware, and um, you boot into a Linux kernel, and then you have, um, you have your whole OpenBMC there, um, with, which uh, kind of orchestrate system de, de orchestrates the whole thing, and you have a DBus as a backbone um, which you know takes care of all the communication, right? So if you want to read any sensors through uh, on a Redfish or IPMI or so, basically everything goes through the DBus to get the sensor reading and so on and so forth. Um, <coughs> It has a Yocto build system, right? So Yocto Bitbake uh, build system. A full clean build on my computer takes around eight, eight hours, uh, so you know to get all the dependencies and these kind of things. So that's 
that's pretty painful. Um, you can configure the whole thing through metadata, um, so I'm not really an OpenBMC expert, but uh, there are a couple of recipes and configuration files that you can actually um, set up to configure it to your needs, basically, and to your own board. Um, it has its own kernel fork, uh, because they have a couple, couple of custom patches on top of the Linux kernel, so um, they try to stay as close as possible to the mainline kernel, but um, yeah. Um, they have like a, a couple of custom patches on top of that. And they use the Garrett review system, so everything's running on Git, basically. Okay, uh, what can it do? So it has like a lot of functionalities, right? Um, it can, as I already said, basically do everything, right? So um, it turns the host on and off, it can update the host, um, it can update itself, you have uh, the possibility for multiple images, like primary, secondary, uh, secondary BIOS images and BMC images, it can simulate any hardware, um, you have like virtual USB sticks, you know, web UI, Redfish, IPMI, whatever you want, right? Um, it's all there, um, and by default a lot of this stuff is actually enabled, um, and you get like the whole package more or less. Um, if that's a good idea or not, that depends on your use case, maybe. Um, but that's that's what you get. And OMMC per se is like a good stack, right? Um, it's it's well maintained. Uh, I mean, it's it's huge, right? It has a lot, a lot of functionality. Uh, it's well maintained. Um, it is like tested in industry a lot. It gets shipped on a lot of servers, so it's a pretty good stack. However, we could probably improve on a couple of points here. And um, I'd like to show you a solution on, on how we can possibly or, or possibly not um, improve here, right? So I got a couple of things um, that kind of motivated us into um, um, finding something else. And uh, one of the main reasons is actually deep loading the whole stack, right? Um, as you saw already, um, we have, it has a lot of functionalities, it's like a very big stack, everything comes by default, more or less, and when we're developing OpenBMC for, um, for our customers, we notice that sometimes we are running, for example, into timing issues. Um, we have one customer where we do the power sequencing on the BMC directly, right? So normally if you boot up a board, so that's more or less only for you, right? If you boot up a board, you don't have to put only power on it, right? And and it just works, uh, but you have to do some power sequencing, right, to, to get the whole board up and running. Um, so that you have to go to some sequences of signals um, to get, you know, the host up and running. And we try to do that on, on OpenBMC directly. Um, so we built like a huge state machine um, and try to do that because normally um, there's a CPLD on the board, like programmable hardware, that takes care of exactly that. And we tried to, tried to do that in software. However, OpenBMC was so bloated um, that it was actually too slow um, to, to get it running, right? So we had to strip off OpenBMC in order to make it work um, that, that we can do power sequencing in software, which was like a very tedious ta task. Um, we are working with big server systems like four socket um, server systems and um, they have so many sensors, so many fans, um, so many things to monitor. The web UI gets utterly slow at some point, right? We are fetching over uh, like 300 different sensor readings or so, and um, I don't know. The, it looks like the web UI or how the whole Dbus infrastructure is not really meant to to uh, support that. Um, however, it got like utterly slow. Um, also, one point is um, OpenBMC or like servers are rarely used alone, right? You normally don't have like one server. Uh, you probably have like a rack or, you know, more than one rack. Um, whatever the, the multiple racks. Yeah, like a data center, right? You probably have a data center. That's like the next level, right? You get one rack, then data center. I don't know. Um, okay, so you, you probably don't have only one server. You've got multiple ones. And the BMC stack should reflect that. And what that means, I, I, will, I will get into that later. Um, it would be nice if we could get, get rid of C and C++, right? Um, for various reasons, um, but it would be great if we can do that. And um, what would be even more great, um, if you could get a faster build system. Because, um, I don't know, so we have a build server just for Yocto or just for OpenBMC. Uh, it's a 192 core um, AMD system. It takes like 20 minutes to build it. That's probably still fine, or 50 minutes, but um, I don't know. 
uh, it needs, it's like 2023, right? It, it has to be better somehow. And um, so what we came up with, or, or um, the, the idea of, of the initial project, so it's not our own project, we kind of took it over, um, was the concept of, of how Linux boot does it, right? Um, you probably heard it in, in Hancock's talk yesterday. Um, so what is Linux boot? It's basically putting a Linux kernel in firmware. And um, the normal way um, how we do it is that we build the init RUMFFs with U root, right? U root is an init RUMFS builder in Go. And um, what we did there in U root is we rewrote a lot of the standard library, um, uh, standard Linux tools in Go, right? Like LS and IP and whatever you want to have there. Um, and we rewrote everything in Go, and we are able to um, combine all these different Go programs or Go files that we wrote to one single binary in BusyBox mode. Um, how do we do that? Um, we're basically linking all the commands together and fetching all the dependencies that you have to like one big uh, binary with one big dependency so that you don't like have um, um, uh, code duplication more or less throughout all the binaries, right? So every, everyone's, uh, every command shares the same binary in the end. Um, and when we can build an in 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 FS with you root in the end. Uh, and that's the interesting thing. Um, and um, in, on server systems, it's, uh, it's used a lot for as a bootloader to basically boot Linux in the end, right? So that you can, on your, in your host firmware, you can do, I don't know, uh, remote at a station first and then, you know, boot the kernel in the end. Um, and we wanted to have the same Go stack, more or less, also on the BMC. So um, we came up with UBMC. Um, so the initial proof of concept was not made by us. Um, so that was uh, made by some guy, uh, some guy called Christian Svensson. Um, and uh, he came up with that project 2018. Um, however, um, due to you know, lack of time and resources, um, it kind of stalled a little bit. Um, and there was a change of ownership in, in 2020, 21. Um, not exactly sure when. And we took it over. And um, the goals are, you know, fairly, fairly easy here. Uh, we wanted a simple and small BMC stack, like US and, and micro. Um, we wanted to have a drop-in replacement for, for the current solutions there. And um, it, w it should be powered by the community, right? So obviously it should be open source um, because we all here are kind of open source driven here. Um, however, we also decided that we don't want to be compatible with everything, right? So we dropped IPMI, for example, from the start right away. Obviously, you can build it in again because um, everything here is Go-based. Um, so in the end, um, if you find an IPMI library written in Go, which should be fairly easy, um, you can re-enable it. Um, but for us, uh, we just dropped that straight away. Um, and it's go from the reset vector, right? So we decided um, to not do some U-boot, whatever, whatever, um, but rather say take uh, Tamago as a bootloader here um, and boot into a Linux kernel and then um, have the, the UBMC main binary in the end um, in the inner drum FS um, and have that running there. So um, it's really go all the way, which is pretty neat um, and pretty nice for us. Um, we looked in, you know, what requirements do we have and, and um, how can we satisfy those. And uh, we don't want it like a complicated development setup, so everything is more or less running on Docker. Um, it builds in, in a couple of seconds if you want to build it, um, rather than hours. Um, we are using Dagger and, and task files to, um, 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 to, you know, keep uh, make it easy to build and, and keep the dependencies low, low here. And also, um, whatever you do locally, you can also do the same stuff in the CI or the other way around. Whatever works in the CI should also work locally on your computer. Um, that means the build environment is uniform across all the platforms. And um, you actually have the option to build the kernel in the user space timeless if you want to. Um, so that should be reproducibly, uh, reproducible build. Buildable? Reproducible buildable? Probably. Okay, um, we got SBOM support right away, built in. So every time we build it, um, we also generate an SBOM um, that gets uh, baked into the image. Um, all build artifacts are actually signed, and UBMC enforces a chain of trust 
during boot and runtime here. Um, for updates, we use the update framework. Um, guess what? It's not a framework. It's a specification how to do updates. Um, and um, it's a way on how you want to deploy your updates. Um, everything is signed. We have an A-B scheme. Um, and the, the update framework kind of states on how you uh, want to distribute your updates. Right? You get like multiple servers. Um, they're kind of, you can check the specification, right? I mean. Um, how to work that? Um, we are we are using um, RPC, so we just switch to Connect basically, uh, which is the better way of gRPC as a standard interface. So we we as I said, like we got rid of IPMI in the first place. Um, we are working on Redfish, but gRPC or RPC is really the way to go on how we do it. Uh, and we um, have a multi-host architecture by default, right? So that means that. Um, all the client tooling and web UI, you basically can run outside of the BMC. And um, the BMC also ships by default without a, uh, without a UI. Um, so we don't have a web UI by default in there. We are working on uh, getting it going. But yeah, from a default point of view, it's just not in there. Um, because we say, OK, everything is via RPC. And you can basically spawn your web server you know, somewhere. Who cares? Um, and just access all the BMCs via RPC. Um, you know, either from one one of the BMC can access all the other BMCs, or you have it completely outside of the rack um, and manage it there. Um, you can have like a push or pull principle, so you can either pull all the uh, BMCs, or um, and the push thing is something that we're working on, is that if a BMC has you know a new data, it actually pushes them to you rather than um, rather than you pulling the data all the time. Um, but that, that's that's still ongoing here, and um, so the, I mean that's my graphic skills here. Um, so the the architecture model looks, looks like this. So as I said, right, we got Tamago here um, on the bottom, uh, booting into a Linux kernel, and the UBMC, like the main application, more or less spawns. Uh, we're using Bolt, uh, which is a um, a Go-based by uh, database, a uh, key-value database, as the backend, right? So every sensor readings and these kind of things goes into that database, uh, database, and all the routines, the Go routines, um, access the database. Um, it's thread safe, and um, they access the database to read like the sensor readings out of there of that. So yeah, it's like a different architectural concept um, that that OpenBMC has here. Um, the interesting thing is it's it's much faster and we can um, actually handle much more um, much more load on, on on these things right so we can easily read like a couple of hundreds of sensors um, and give them out via via RPC without you know breaking together yeah as I said we disable nearly everything by default uh, so only like RPC is like the only interface that is enabled by default. Um, however, you can obviously enable SSH um, to get uh, get a shell. Uh, you can enable we um, a web UI, so that is like work in progress. That is also work in progress. Uh, can able, uh, enable Redfish yep. um, as, as another interface. Um, however, our idea was really to make it as slim as possible and to um, not go the way enable everything by default, but rather than disable everything by default and only enable what you really, really need. And uh, you basically have two ways um, to enable these kind of things. So you can either um, not compile them in at all, right? So that would be the easiest solution. Um, or you can compile it in um, and enable it at runtime. Um, that's like the two options that you have, right? So if you say, okay, I probably need a web UI in the future, um, you can in, in it, compile it in and enable it through runtime, um, you know, uh, set an uh, RPC call to kind of enable it, and then it, it comes up. Yeah, what's the support? Um, so we are a fairly young project, so um, we are mainly supporting A speeds right now. Um, uh, we are supporting one of the ASRock uh, cards, the, the ASRock BMC plugin card. Uh, I think the, the, the name is Paul. <laughs> um, it has an A speed 2500, I guess, on it. Um, we are supporting the HPE uh, GXP, which is the BMC SOC from, from, from HPE. Um, and we are working also on the, on the tie on board. We have an S. Uh, 
5549 in our lab um, that we are trying to port. Also, um, we are kind of supporting QMO. Um, however, QMO is um, missing quite some devices um, that, that we need for um, being able to, um, to run it you know, functionally somehow. Um, so we're not sure if you want to really look more into that. Um, but for example, the Astro card is like a very, very um, uh, cheap card that you can probably buy to do some development on it. I mean, comparisons, right? Um, that's the, old, the, the first thing that we get asked more or less, okay, how does it compare to BMC um, or to OpenBMC? And the thing is, you're kind of, um, and I'm not sure if it's a general term, you're kind of uh, comparing apples and peers. Is that a, th a what? Oh, you're comparing apples to oranges? Okay, in Germany it's apples to peers. Um, <laughs> so it's like two different things, right? It's a different concept, it's a different architecture. Um, we are not supporting that many boards yet, um, and these kind of things. However, I took one of the tie-in uh, tie boards that we have in our lab and booted it up um, from putting power on it um, and until we basically um, are in the shell. And it takes about three and a half minutes and a little bit more, right? So it, um, yeah, it's like I don't know, 10 seconds of U-boot and then like the kernel needs a couple of seconds. And then OpenBMC starts up you know, the whole DBus infrastructure and like all the services and, and uh, I don't know what it needs. Um, so that was, that was like really, really, uh, that, that takes really long. And we did the same thing um, on the SROC card, so not on the tie-in yet. Um, and it's, it's 16 seconds until we are in the user space. Um, I would assume that once we are running on, a, um, on the tie-in board, we probably need a little bit more um, to get everything up and running, but we will for sure um, not do like a three-minute boot, right? So it will be, uh, I would assume, under a minute or so, but uh, I can give you more, more reliable uh, data once we, have, once we are there. So what are the next steps here? Um, so currently we are majorly reworking the repository, right? So we're changing the whole structure. Um, we're doing that the second time now. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of afraid that we're doing that over and over again. Um, so we are reworking it. Um, so UBMC is, uh, there are only a couple of repos now in the UBMC organization, but that will change next week or, the we or in the next two weeks, let's say. Um, that, that we get all the repos up and running there again and have the new structure enabled. Um, yeah, we're trying to get feature parity with OMBMC to the extent that we want it to be. As I said, right, IPMI or IPMI uh, kind of is not the case. I think OMBMC dropped IPMI support as well, but I'm not sure. Kind of, right? They don't care about it anymore, right? That's the, yeah. um, but it's still there, but it, you know, it doesn't work. Um, yeah, Redfish is not fully supported. Uh, we don't have a system event log yet. Um, the web UI is still work in progress. Um, pushing the data via RPC um, is still in progress. So there are a lot of open tasks um, that we're working on um, to get that really going um, and to be like a production grade um, firmware. All right, so what can you do now? Uh, you can follow us, right? So go github.com slash ubmc. Um, Probably not the last UBMC because that repo is not there yet, but just go to the organization um, and check that out. Uh, we got a Slack channel um, on the open source firmware Slack. So if you're not on that yet, you can join that, slack.osfw.org. Um, we will also be at the conference in October on the Open Source Firmware Conference in San Francisco. Um, and I guess we will also hand in a UBMC talk. Let's see if that gets... Um, accepted, um, and if you want to follow me, uh, that's my Twitter tag. Any questions on that? Oh. Yep. When you default disable all the interface, outside, uh, outgoing interface is up on the UBMC, what is the UBMC itself exactly doing? 
Yeah, uh, good question. Um, so we we for sure have always RPC enabled, right? Um, so and you can rewrite to to uh, the RPC API to to fetch the data, right? So it's um, it's it's just a different API, right? So it's not we don't enable Redfish and, and IPMI and and not a shell and not a web UI, but you can access the um, the device via the the RPC API, and you can do basically everything via RPC calls. So the consumer uh, of the information provided by OpenBMC will need to use the RPC to communicate with um, the BMC. Yeah, yeah, right. So if you want to, um, let's say you shoot up your own web UI, right, on your own computer, you have to uh, get in the, the address of the BMC, more or less, right? And then you can access the BMC via a web UI. That web UI is running on your own computer, but it calls into the BMC via RPC calls um, through the network. Does that make sense? Okay. We can take that offline if you want to. Okay. Any other questions? Does not seem to be the case. All right. So uh, thanks for getting out of bed for me. And uh, yeah, thanks.